Today I figured I'd just shoot a quick video, the CPS or customer programming software for this uh, Anytone 578 that Bridgecom System sent me. This isn't gonna be a, a deep dive. This is just gonna be a sort of a basic overview. I'll show you some of the different options, some of the things you need to keep in mind. I'll talk a little bit about the DMR stuff. I'm not gonna get crazy into the DMR programming today. That's a little more complicated. I will show you how to program in a basic repeater setup. As far as things like talk groups and things like that, I'm really only gonna talk about two of them. So with that being said, let me get the radio set up for programming. There's a USB port here on the side. So let me get everything set up, get the computer set up. We'll get over to the customer programming software. We'll take a look at that and uh, we'll, we'll program a couple of repeaters to the radio and then we will come back over to the radio from the computer and we'll make sure that everything works. I won't be able to hit any DMR repeaters from here. The closest one is way out of range. So I will program both a DMR and analog repeater in here, but I won't be able to hit the DMR repeater from here. I'll probably have to get a hotspot or something if I want to use DMR from the house. But at any rate, let's hop over to the computer. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so let's take a look at how to program some repeaters into this thing. Now, I've had to mess with this programming software a little bit to get kind of familiar with it because it's a little different than the other DMR programming software I've used. So I think I've got everything kind of down now so I can make it work. It's a little bit weird. Uh, DMR in and of itself is kind of obnoxious. You'll see why in a minute. Let's start with easy. So first things first, you need to download the programming software. You'll see it right here. You can download it right from Bridgecom's website. When you open it, if I remember correctly, it's, there's gonna be two sort of placeholder channels. And if it, that's in the channel list here. If I go to zone, you will see one zone. Now you have to have at least one zone because you've got to have some place to put the channels. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click read from radio. So this is going to pull the data. Yes, I know I made changes to it. This is going to pull the data in from the radio. All right. So I was able to read from the, the radio. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete the two. Uh, the radio is rebooting right now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete the two repeaters that I just had come in because I'm going to reprogram those. I just wanted to make sure everything was working correctly before I shot this. So. Let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about how to program. We'll start with an analog repeater because this is the easy part. So we're going to come over to this page right here. This is a list of repeaters. My local club hosts a list of repeaters for all the different bands. So like these are all local repeaters. Here's all a two meter. Here's all our 70 centimeter. This is the Southern Tier Fusion Network. So we have a, a linked Yesu System Fusion Network here. Here's the 10 meter repeaters, six meter repeaters, one and a quarter and 33 centimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to program in a 70 centimeter repeater and I'm going to program in this N2YOW, whoops, right here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to program that, that in first because analog is easy. So we're going to come over here. We're going to go to channel 10. We're going to double click. We're going to call this N2YOW and I'm going to put a U after that because this is the UHF repeater with that call sign. There's also a VHF repeater with that call sign. I follow that one with a V. So I know which one's two meter, which one's 70 centimeters. Sometimes I put two meters and 70 or two M and 70 CM after them. Kind of depends on what I feel like, but I'm just going to put U. So next thing we need to do is we need our frequencies. So this guy, my receive frequency is 444.300 and it is a plus five offset. So we're going to go like this. We're going to come up here. We're going to go 444.300. And then it's going to be 449.300 is going to be our transmit frequency, right? Because our offset is plus five. This is going to be an analog repeater. We can set our transmit power wherever we want, and I'm going to set it to the highest. Bandwidth. Most of the time, most of your analog stuff is going to be wide bandwidth. So we're going to select 25K. And then the last thing I need to do is I need to come down and I need to put my tone in. So you'll see right here, I've got a tone of 173.8. So we're going to come over here. We're going to go... CTCSS encode. We're going to go 173.8. Boom. Click OK. Bang. It's programmed. Okay, so you'll see channel 10. There's our receive frequency, our transmit frequency. It's analog, high power, wide, all right, our CTCSS tone, and the name. Now, if I just push this to the radio, I won't be able to see this unless I put this in a zone. You can do this from the radio too. But you need to go into your zone. So double click that. Here are the current things that are in that zone. These are possible programs that I can put in there. So I just programmed this channel in. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click the little add button. You'll see it populate down here in the zone channel, the zone channel members. You can make as many zones. a whole, you can make a whole pile of zones and you can separate things into zones. So let's suppose you wanted all your 70 centimeter 
repeaters in one zone and all your two meter in another and all your DMR in another, whatever. You can break things up all sorts of different ways. So I'm going to click OK. So now that is programmed. That's the easy part. Now let's get over to the DMR side. This is where things get convoluted. Now, people get frustrated with DMR code plugs. There are basically three, no, there's more than three, but there are three common digital encoding platforms for ham radio. DMR, which isn't really a ham radio thing. It was designed for commercial use. D-Star, which uh, like Kenwood and ICOM use. And then Yesu System Fusion, which is Yesu's proprietary digital mode. I'm going to be honest with you, System Fusion is the easiest to use by a country mile. It's also the most limited, but if you're looking just for simple, it's hard to beat Yesu System Fusion. However, if you don't have any System Fusion repeaters around and you don't have a hotspot, it's kind of useless. So DMR was designed as a commercial mode, uh, you know, uh, public safety, municipalities, things like that use it a lot. Um, it's not really designed for ham radio use. And so it can be a little convoluted to use in the ham radio context. It, when you're doing this in a commercial scenario, whoever's programming your radios, programs the radios up, you hand them to your users, they set it to a channel and talk. All of this stuff that's done under the hood, they never see. But you, as a ham, you're going to have to learn how to do all this stuff to program all your radios because they're not just getting handed to you pre-programmed. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to radioid.net and you're going to need to get a DMR ID. So click register and then follow the directions. Click all these guys. Click register account. It's going to have you put your call sign in, some other information. They are going to, I'm not going to do it obviously because I already have one. They're going to manually verify you are who you say you are. Right? They're actually going to check your call sign and all that stuff. And then they will issue, an, you issue you an ID number. Once you have that ID number, over in the programming software, if you uncollapse digital, you'll see radio ID list. So you'll see my call sign, and that's my radio ID. So my radio ID is 3209924. Think of that as like my phone number, basically. Okay, same idea, kind of. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But my radio ID is 3209924. So any DMR radio I use, I'm going to put that number in now the next thing we need to do is we need to understand how dmr works so let's take a look at the repeater that i'm going to program so i'm going to program this salem mountain k1 nra repeater so this is down in carbondale pennsylvania so up here is binghamton new york on the map i'm just to the west over here right about where the hand is that repeater is right here where this little tower is all right down near scranton pennsylvania just just northeast of scranton and i've used this repeater before so up here, you'll see our uplink and downlink frequency. So our receive and transmit frequencies. You'll see it's got a plus five offset. The next thing down you're going to see is color code. And it says color code eight. Just think of color codes as like your CTCSS tones. It's the same idea. The repeater needs to see a matching color code in order for it to open up and allow you to talk through it. Okay, so don't overcomplicate it. Color codes are just like tones. Next thing down, you'll see the DMR ID for this repeater is 310304. So that's that DMR ID you just saw. Then you're going to see there are time slots. Now, this is one of the things that makes DMR interesting. DMR is TDMA. So it runs two different time slots, time slot one and time slot two. And they transmit in 30 millisecond cycles. What that effectively means is you can have two conversations going on at the same time on the same frequency and they won't hear each other because they're talking on different time slots. All right. So you'll see on time slot one, it allows all Brandmeister talk groups. Brandmeister is just a DMR network. There are all these different networks with all these different talk groups. And those talk groups could be anything from a local talk group to the world. Okay, and you'll see in a minute, I've got some programmed into another radio. So this one, you can see time slot one, all Brandmeister talk groups are available. So you can call into any Brandmeister talk group on time slot one. 3142 PA is static. That's the Pennsylvania wide talk group. Time slot two Talk group 310304 is static. In other words, the local repeater is the one that you're going to be talking into normally. Okay. It all it's always connected to 31304. Or yeah, 310304. That allows you to connect to the repeater only from any location. So if you wanted to call in from a hotspot to that repeater and talk through that repeater, you could do it through talk group 310304. All right. Talk group 31425 is the PA cross mode that goes between digital and analog. That's also static. All right. So 
the next thing we need to do is we need to program in some talk groups. Let's go back over to our programming software and we need to put talk groups in. So I'm gonna come here to contact and talk groups and I'm gonna click that. See the first one just defaults to one, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just go ahead and open that. This is where we're gonna put in our contacts for each repeater. So I'm gonna call this Carbondale. I'll call this K1NRA. I'm gonna call that K1NRA Carbondale. So that's our local K1NRA. That is gonna be a group call. So you can see I can select private call, which is exactly what it sounds like. So if I wanted to call another radio, I would call that exact DMR ID and it only would go to that particular DMR ID, okay? Group call is exactly what it sounds like. An all call would be like, let's suppose you wanted to use 10 different DMR radios simplex. So you'd program all in the same simplex frequency. You'd set that frequency to all call. And then anybody who was on that frequency transmitting in DMR could talk, you know, using that all call. All right, this is gonna be a group call, all right? And the, the DMR ID, we're gonna go back here, was 310304, so we're gonna go ahead and copy that. Come over here and plop that in here. Not gonna worry about a call alert, we're gonna say okay. So you can now see that I've got 310304, that's K1 NRA Carbondale, that's a group call. The next ones I wanna put in, so I'm, this is the programming software for my TYT 390, and it, these are different, groups that I've put in, different contacts that I've put in. So Local 2, Local 9, New York, Pennsylvania, Nationwide, the TAC channels, the Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, the Adirondacks, Upstate New York, the Southern Tier, the Carbondale Local, that's the one I just programmed, Parrot, Disconnect, and Northeast Pennsylvania. I'm also going to program in Parrot and Disconnect. Parrot is exactly what it sounds like. So if you call into a repeater with call ID 9990, it is gonna pair it back to you anything you say in. So if you're trying to make sure you're getting into the repeater and can be heard, you call in on 9990 on a private call and it was just gonna spit back to you exactly what you said. Kind of cool. Disconnect is gonna be call ID 4000. Imagine I call somebody on the telephone and when I'm done talking, I just set the phone down. I never hang up. That's kind of the same idea if you call into one of these call IDs. So let's suppose I call into this Southern tier 31367. That's going to be the entire Southern tier of New York. If I call in on that talk on it, when I'm done, I just put the radio away. I'm still connected to that, that talk group. Until I disconnect from it, I'm still taking up that. I'm still in that group. So what you do is you call in on 4000 and that disconnects you from the group. It's kind of like hanging up the phone. So I'm going to program in parrot and disconnect also. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to go like this. We're going to go parrot. That is going to be a private call. That is 9990, click OK, and then we're going to do our disconnect. So we're going to say that is going to be a group call. That is DMR ID 4000. OK, so now you see I've got the K1 NRA Carbondale local, it's 310304, that's a group call. You'll see I've got parrot is 9990, that's a private call because only I need to hear it parroting. And then I've got the disconnect is 4,000 and that's a group call. So I have those three DMR contacts programmed. Now we can go back in and program the repeaters. Like I said, this is a little convoluted. So we're gonna go into our channels. Let's go ahead and program channel 11. So this I'm gonna call uh, K1 NRA local. All right, so we're going to come over here and we're gonna go our Receive frequency is 440.05625. So we're gonna plug that guy in here. It is a plus five. Copy that guy and we're gonna plop that in here. Okay, this is digital. I'm gonna have this transmit on turbo. I might actually try to connect on this. I don't think I can reach it from here. It's quite a quite a haul, but you'll see it defaults to narrow bandwidth and you cannot change it. All right, it's always gonna be narrow bandwidth on DMR. You'll see how we lost the ability to change any of our analog stuff because it is an analog. Okay, so up here, I can select my contacts. So this is going to be K1 NRA Car Carbondale. That's what I want. I'm going to leave it on that. My radio ID is K2EJT. Our color code was 8. We want to do this on time slot 2. If you remember correctly, that local talk group was on time slot 2. So I'm on time slot 2. All right, I'm not gonna turn the encryption or any of that stuff on because I'm not gonna get into encryption and whether it should be allowed or not. There are reasons for and against, not something I wanna even touch in this video. So if all that stuff is good and it looks like it is, I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay. You will now see that there's that repeater.
Now I need to program in parrot and disconnect also for that same repeater. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go like this and we're gonna call this K1 NRA parrot and we're gonna put our same frequencies in here. So we're gonna say our receive frequency was this guy. All right, and our transmit frequency was this guy. Okay, it is digital. We're gonna leave it on turbo. Yep, yep, yep. We're gonna change this to parrot. So we're gonna change our contact over to parrot now, 9990. Yep, color code again is gonna be eight. I'm gonna set that to slot two. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Click OK. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our disconnect in. So we're gonna go K1RNA. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and put our same frequencies in. And yes, I know this is kind of obnoxious, but this is what programming a DMR radio is like. Okay, digital, we're gonna make that turbo. Yep, yep, yep. We're gonna make this disconnect. Okay, color code eight, time slot two. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Click OK. All right, so now you can see we have got the K1 RNA local, K1 RNA disconnect. All right, so you can see that our contact for that one is K1 NRA Carbondale, which is that 310304. You can see that the parrot one is parrot, which is 4,000, or I'm sorry, 9,900, 9,990. And our, this guy, disconnect. There we go. There we go. Okay, now it's working. So you can see we've got our contact for this guy, for this guy, and for this guy. Now we need to put those into a zone. So we're just gonna go boop, pop that guy over, pop that guy over, pop that guy over. They are all now in zone one. So there's all my channels. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write all these to the radio. So I'm gonna come up to the top and I'm gonna click write to radio. Do you wanna continue? Yes, I do. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna push everything. Okay, so it says copying data to the radio. Please wait, do not power off. You just heard the radio reboot. All right, and if everything is correct, I should be able to see all of these repeaters on the radio over here. So let me boot it back up. Let me just make sure I can see these guys on here. So there's the disconnect, there's parrot, there's local, and there's the N2YOW 70 centimeter. So they're all in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop back over to the radio. We're gonna make sure this works. Like I said, I'm not gonna try to hit the DMR repeater from here, it's way too far away, but I will at least make sure this works with the 70 centimeter N2YOW repeater. So you can see on VFOB, you can see it says N2YOWU. That is the 70 centimeter repeater I just programmed. And if I scroll, there's a K1 NRA local. There's the parrot. There's the disconnect. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make sure this repeater actually works. K2 EJT testing 300. Okay, so I heard it squelch. See if it IDs. Yep. Okay, so we got in. K2EJT clear. Okay, so as you can see, we got in no problem. Now my suspicion is I'll, I'll try just for giggles. We'll try to get into this. I really doubt we're gonna get there. This is a long haul for 70 centimeters. So let's see what happens. Now with DMR, you gotta key up and wait a second. Nope, see how it's a repeater not found? Okay, so they can't reach it. So we're way too far away. That does not surprise me. So, like I said, everything's programmed up correctly. It just isn't going to be able to hit the repeater because that repeater's, God, I don't know, 70 miles away probably. And that kind of distance on 70 centimeters, you can do it on 70 centimeters. I've made 60 mile repeater contacts on 70 centimeters, but I can't hit that repeater from here. So at any rate, everybody, that gives you an idea as to what it's like to use the programming software to program one of these radios. It's a little more complicated, but it's not horrible. Everybody makes DMR out to sound super complicated. It's not. You just have to think about it a little differently, right? It, you have to think about it more in terms of connecting and disconnecting from talk groups as opposed to just picking up a radio and keying up and talking. Yeah.